Right, well, morning. Welcome to another video. Welcome to a video on urban sea fishing today. So we're down on the harbour wall at Gorston today. I've got some mackerel and uh, just going to throw a couple of a uh, couple of baits into the river here just to see what we can get hold of. So without further ado, let's get the stuff out of the truck and let's go find a space because it looks quite busy. <music> Gorston, we're just at the mouth of the river you can see just behind us here. Um, I've got the S Max with me, so I'm just literally just come out for a couple of hours, just got some mackerel just to drown. So uh, we'll just get the um, S Max all set up, get a bait in the water, and then I think what we'll do is I'll take you through my travel fishing sea gear. Right, so not so sure what we'll be able to catch today. It is a sort of a mixture sort of here. You're talking eels, flatties, pouts, whiting, loads and loads of sort of stuff here. There's nothing massive that comes through the river apart from the bass in the summer, but uh, we're a little bit late for that. There still may be a few schoolies about. But anyway, we're gonna set up using the S-Max today. So uh, you've seen this rod in a few videos here. It's the sort of rod that I use on a lot of my sort of heavy duty sort of sea fishing, bits and bobs, catfish fishing, pike fishing, carp fishing, and all sorts like that. So uh, we'll get this set up with a four pound test curve tip on this. Probably the way the water's moving, about a four ounce lead will stick on that. But uh, without further ado, we'll get this all set up. So let's say we're using the S-Max today. So I'm using the four pound test curve tip on this. So this gives this a length of 3.2 meters and casting weight of 100 to 170 grams. So it's absolutely perfect for this condition here. So the reel we're using today is the RR6000 and that's got a 60 pounds braid on it. And I'm probably gonna start off just with a little wishbone rig and about a four ounce lead, I think, with uh, some mackerel. I'm not gonna be a uh, wasting my money on worms fishing in the river here today because it's going to be full of crabs as well and uh, yeah i just personally just think it's a waste of fishing with worms in here you can get still decent enough fish on, on fish baits and stuff here so uh, we'll get a rig on and get some bait in the water because we ain't catching anything sat here talking so i'm just using pieces of mackerel just pushing them onto the hook a couple of times and uh, and then i'm just going to bait elastic that up but that's probably got to be crab o'clock down there, I would say. It pretty much nearly always is crab o'clock. But we shall see. Nice just to get out for the afternoon anyway. That's all I seem to be catching at the minute is blooming crabs. Well, this is a real struggle today. I'm literally just pulling in crab after crab after crab. And when I'm not pulling in crab, the lead's ending up down out to sea because the flow is so, so, so strong here today. So I think what we'll do is I'll take you through all of my travel sea fishing gear and show you the rods and all of the stuff that I'm carrying with me. Obviously, this is season dependent what I carry in here. And the setup I've got in this little bag here is realistically set up for, for summer sea fishing. And it also depends on where you're going as well. So it's really, really important that you do your research and you look at what people are using on wherever you're visiting. And YouTube is an absolute fantastic thing for that just like the summer trip up in uh, Loch Etive I've done loads of research on YouTube to see what bait people are using and what rigs we're using so most of my travel sea gear is kept in this little pouch here so this tiny tiny little pouch carries pretty much everything that I need now the only thing is when it comes to travel fishing you're trying to travel light so you're not taking as much stuff with you so you really need to be able to take enough stuff with you so that you can actually deal with any sort of thing that happens you know you might be fishing on an area that you're getting hefted quite a lot you're losing gear and stuff so you need to be able to carry enough stuff so that you can uh, carry on fishing or move to another spot so inside i've got pretty much everything in there and this is all set up for fishing with the smuggler max 
and the Infinite Ultimate. These are the travel fishing rods by Rigged and Ready. So the Smuggler Max can cast up to a four ounce lead. So basically inside of here, I've got some three ounces and I've also got some four ounces as well. Now I mentioned earlier on about not losing gear and you know, if you're not carrying as much, then it's really, really important that you don't use, lose gear. So on pretty much all of my leads, I'm using lead lifters. I know some people don't like them, but I think, you know, on really deep water and really rocky bottoms, hefty bottoms, it's really important to get that lead off the bottom as soon as you can. And then the other thing as well is the actual tackle that you're using. So I always use a pulley rig as much as I can really. So if I do have a fish on, this is actually pulled right up to the top and then the lead lift actually does help to, to, to lift it up out of the way of the snags on the bottom. So inside of there, I've got four of those that I carry inside of that pouch. And then also three or four sort of two to three ounce leads as well. Now these are used for, for feathering and that sort of thing. So then with the terminal tackle, I've just got two small bags of terminal tackle. So there's a bag here full of hooks in there. So that's from three O's up to a one O's and even some small flatty hooks as well. There's some weight clips inside of there and some, uh, some quick release clips uh, for lure fishing. And then random inside of there, just a few beads, a few uh, pulley rigs, a few swivels inside of that one there. And then I always carry about three different sort of thicknesses of line inside of there because it does happen that you lose a hook length and you've got to replace a hook length. So I've got some 15, some 18 and some 100 pound uh, fluoro inside of there as well. So that's that's specifically for my hook links. And then float fishing, absolutely love float fishing. So being able to sit on a rocky outcrop fishing for some bass using a float is absolutely brilliant. So there, there's just a small pike float. There's some line there just in case I need to use a leader if I'm fishing with braid and uh, a little lead weight as well. And then out comes the rigs. Like I said before, it really depends on what time of the year and where you're fishing with what you're actually carrying with you. But inside of here, I've got pulley rigs on here with 100 pound fluoro leaders on there, fishing for spur dogs and things like that. There's cod rigs, there's bass rigs, there's flatty rigs, there's whiting rigs. And then there's a couple of feather rigs inside of there for, uh, for mackerel feathering as well. But yeah, that's all the rigs I carry. So keeping the lures in this little plastic box just stops the hooks getting caught on the little pouch there. But inside of here, I've just got some hard jigs and some soft baits inside of there. I don't think you can go wrong with the Savage Gear Seekers. I think they're absolutely brilliant lures. And then there's some softer, heavy weighted uh, lures there as well. And then of course, some of the Savage Gear sand eels as well. So just a few little sort of lures that I carry with me as well. Same again, as with everything, it's all dependent on where you are and what time of the year you're fishing. I think these are really underrated. I really, really do. If you're out hiking and camping and things and you're fishing at the same time, you can't always be watching your rod all the time if you're making up some food or doing something with a tent. So just to hear that in the corner of your ear, that will hopefully help you manage to catch that fish. The other thing that's really important is a decent set of long nose pliers. Now these, they're about eight, nine pounds, I think these were, and these are absolutely brilliant. You can sharpen hooks on the back of these ones here. You can make your rigs by using your crimps on it. And obviously you can snip your line and obviously uh, you can get the hook out of the fish as well. Let's just take a look at the rods. So the first rod we're gonna take a look at is the S-Max by Rigged and Ready. And this is a big fish, big weight rod. It really is amazing. I use this for pretty much all of my big fish fishing from pike fishing, cat fishing, beach fishing, pier fishing, surf fishing. It's just a really great all round travel rod. So this has two tips to it. So the first one gives you a length of 3.2 meters with a test curve of four pounds. And from that you can cast 70 to 170 grams. And then the other tip, uh, that basically gives you a length of 3.6 meters with a test curve of three pounds and you can cast 50 to 100 grams and it is just an absolute amazing rod i mean look at this trip here in scotland in the summer you know i'm casting out 150 gram weights into the deep waters of loch Etive and bringing in all of these spur dogs it's just a really really great big fish big weight rod the next one to think about is the, what I like to call the Optimus Prime of travel fishing rods, and this is the Infinite Ultimate, and this is by Rigged and Ready as well. So this one here, you can basically do all types of fishing, whether it's fresh, whether it's sea. But what I like about this one for the sea is it works really, really well with some big lures on the beach. Uh, if you wanna do some fly fishing for some bass, you can turn it into a fly rod, or if you wanna do some small LRF fishing, then you can use that as well. The only thing to think about when it comes down to the Infinite Ultimate is the size of the rod tube, as you can see there. But uh, as long as you can fit it onto your rucksack, then you'll be absolutely fine. 
So when you're out fishing, it's always best to use fresh bait as much as you can, but some situations you can't actually get hold of it. You know, if you're hiking away for a couple of days uh, with a fishing rod or pack raft or whatever on your back, it's really, really difficult to keep fresh sea bait actually live. So having some preserved sea bait is a really, really good way of keeping yourself fishing. Obviously, when you get to where you're going, if you can catch or you can forage um, fresh sea bait, that's always the best thing. But preserving your sea bait like this is a really, really good way of giving you a shelf stable sea bait that you can just keep in your bag and just use whenever you want. Now, this method can be used for fish, shellfish, black lug, rag and squid it's a really really simple method and i'll just show you how i do it so obviously you need some bait so i've got some mackerel that i caught in the summer there if you're doing this with worms then basically just separate any dead worms that are left in your packet there if you're using squid then just just split the squid and pull the guts out and the feather out from inside of it and that's all you need to do you need some bags so i've got some uh, vacuum i've got a vacuum packer here that's what i'm going to use you don't need to use a vacuum packer you can just use your bog standard uh, uh, sealable bags there they're liter bags there uh, we've got some salt so you just need some cheap cheap table salt that's all it is nothing special just cheap 20 19p whatever it is from the co-op around the corner there that's all you need for this method um, and of course i need a knife as well because i'm going to be cutting up these into little tiny uh, hook baits as well so the first thing i'm going to do is just take the top off the salt because it just pours a lot quicker and i'm just going to put a layer of salt in a little tub there just to cover the bottom and then I'm just gonna take one of the fillets. Now I'm gonna cut these up so that they are each cut is a whole hook bait. So depending on the side of the fillet, it depends on how I'm gonna cut the actual piece of fish. And then we'll just go through the rest of the fillets, just cutting them up at different sizes so you've got different sizes of hook baits. And then once you've got one layer, just put another layer of salt over the top of those. So it's a really, really good method of having a shelf stable sea bait in your bag. Worms, black lug it works, blow lug it doesn't work at all. Rag I think is probably the best worm if you wanna do a worm bait, but it's just a really, really simple method of using any bait that you've got left over or just making up what we're doing bags to take up on an expedition so that you've always got a bait with you and like i said before i actually think this works really really well like this because it really stiffens up the bait and it makes it just more pliable and more solid once it's on the hook and i actually think that the extra salt on it helps with uh, with the attraction as well so so there we go so that's all of those fillets in that box there i'm just going to completely cover this up with salt and then we're going to leave this for about a day inside of this so the salt draws out all of the moisture out of the fish and then we'll bag it up into the separate bags all right so it's been 24 hours so we'll just have a look at the fish and as you can see that's dried really really solid all of this is really really solid there's not much fluid or what fluid has come out of the fish is is all in the all in the tub there so you can see that that fish has gone really really solid and it's pulled most of the fluid out of the fish. So like I said, I'm gonna vacuum pack this fish. So I've got these vacuum bags here. Now, there's a trick to making it seal properly. So what's happening is when you're putting the fish in there, you don't want to get all of the salt and any of the fluid around the top of the bag there. So we're gonna cut down one of the other bags there to use like a little sleeve so we don't get any of the salt or uh, fluid on the top there so we can get a proper seal when we vacuum pack it. So we'll push the bag inside this bag and then all of the fish goes in through here and then that stops any salt or fluid getting onto here so we can get a good seal and it can vacuum and then it can heat seal okay. And we'll just get as much salt off as we can. Right, and there we go. That's all of the fish inside. And then just with the top bag, I'm just gonna pull that out and that keeps that bag completely clean around the top there and then just taking the bag putting that in the vacuum sealer making sure that's over the top there pushing that down and then we'll press to seal So there we go, we've got a completely shelf stable pack of sea bait there. So like I say, you can do that with shellfish, squid, worms and fish as well. It's just a really, really simple way of using up all of your leftover bait and just having a packet of bait already available for whenever you need it.
Well, we're losing the light a little bit now and we are catching nothing. It is really, really difficult. I've lost one whiting. Um, it's so difficult for the lead to hold bottom. If you imagine all of that water that's fell um, and it's all in the Norfolk Broads and on the marshes, it's all running out of this river and it's so, so difficult to hold bottom. And what I am catching is crabs. So there we go. I think it's going to be a good old blankety blank for today. But I hope you've uh, got some information out of what I carry in my travel fishing there that might give you some ideas to help you along with your travel fishing. I really do rate this S-Max. It is an absolute fantastic rod. And the Infinite Ultimate, I think, is an absolute brilliant rod if you're into your lure fishing and your fly fishing for bass and things like that as well. Please don't forget the 5% discount code and that is in the description below. So thanks for watching today's video. My name is Martin. I'm into my hiking, my fishing, my blanking and my pack crafting and bushcraft and stuff. So please do follow along on the channel. I hopefully we'll catch you next time on the next one.